Hello, it's Jeanette with GeoAmazing Paper Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am back with another video tutorial, and in today's tutorial, I'm making some of these bridal uh, shower favors, or you can even use them as wedding favors. They're little boxes. They are um, have this little triangle in the middle, and this is kind of like an old favorite, uh, but I've uh, made it a little bit bigger than the one that Linda Parker had, like way back in 2015 she did a smaller version of this box so adorable but I decided to make it a little bit bigger and work out the measurements so that I can make these boxes for you and now this isn't this beautiful ribbon this ribbon I think it came out in the uh, the fall winter catalog it is called the metallic mesh ribbon okay look that here Okay, and it's coming back. It, it, it will be in the new catalog. And also in the new catalog, and that starts May the 4th. Um, I know, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> well, anyway, also uh, what I used is these silver and clear epoxies. I used the silver ones on here just to put a few little uh, pieces of bling on there. You can put as many as you want to, but I just use three and they come in the silver and you can also just use the clear ones. There's some raindrops and there's circles and diamonds. Really, really pretty epoxy. Um, uh, I don't know what I'd call those. They're called silver and clear epoxy essentials. Okay. And now with this one here, I used one of our new colors, and that color is Pale Papaya. And I also put some Pale Papaya ribbon on here, and also some of the Pale Papaya jewels. that uh, They're called um, the 2021 to 2023 In Color Jewels. Okay, so like I said, this is Pale Papaya, but the next one that I'm going to demonstrate is going to be with the fresh freesia which is another one of our new colors and i'm going to show you how to um make this and put this box together it's not too too complicated and it's kind of fun i'm going to bring out my paper cutter first though because i have to cut this paper down now i'm going to cut it down to five and a half inches because i'm only going to use half this paper so you can get two of these out of one uh, one piece of cardstock and then I'm also going to cut this down to seven and three quarters of an inch that's all I need is seven and three quarters of an inch right here okay and that is it for that okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my simply score scoring tool right there and on the short side I'm going to score this at one and one quarter, okay? And then I am going to score this also at the four and a half inch mark, okay? And this will be the top of our box. And now I'm going to um, turn this this way. Actually, I could turn it this way. Is that how it goes? Yes. <laughs> I have to turn it where the smaller of the score lines, the, the spacing is a little bit smaller, and that is the top of our box. I need to score this at three and a half inches, okay? And then I also need to score this at seven inches, okay? And this, I, I just wanted to mention that this box is about four inches tall, and it's about three and a half inches wide. And that's where that three and a half inches comes from comes from right here between here and here okay and now I'm going to flip this over because now I have to score the middle of this these two sections here and that the middle falls at the one and three quarters of an inch on this one on this section here and on this section here it is the five and one quarter of an inch okay then I'm going to flip it back over and now what I need to do is I need to make some diagonal lines from here to this intersection right here okay so let me take my uh, simply scored scoring tool out of here and I'm going to be doing this with a ruler but I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet just to get a better impression and a nicer fold uh, score line here and I'm going to put my my 
stylus, you could use the stylus from your Simply Scored or the one that you have on your Take Your Pick tool. But I'm going to use this one here. And I am going to score from this score line here to that one there. And do an, a diagonal like that. Okay. And then I'm going to match that up with this intersection here. And right there. So let me make sure I've got that right. It doesn't move. Okay. And we're going to do the same on this side here, but between this intersection here and here and here and here. So like I say, this is an old favorite. I'm sure you remember if you've been doing paper crafts for a while, you'll remember how cute that little box that Linda Parker made. Oh my goodness, it was just so adorable, cute. And it was such a beautiful wedding favor. Um, when she used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Okay, so I've got my V's. I don't know if you can see them better on the back or the front. Um, I don't know if you can see the... I'm trying to get it to where I can see it on my camera here, but um, it, they're there. The V's are there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting... Uh, let me see, where are my paper snips? I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to do any... Um, folding just yet. I'm going to do the cutting first. Now I want to cut this rectangle completely off and I'm also going to take the score line with it. So I'm cutting right at that edge, the edge of that score line into this score line right here and then I'm just going to make a wedge like that. A little diagonal cut here. And I'm also going to cut this one too. I'm going to make a diagonal and I will cut that score line completely off. So it's going to look like that. Now I'm going to cut up all of these score lines, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut the score line off. You don't have to do this, but I find that it lays better on the bottom when I cut that score line completely off on these three parts. Okay, now I want to fold and burnish all the score lines except this one right here. And then I'm going to go and fold the diagonal lines. So you really couldn't um, fold those diagonal lines until you made these cuts on the bottom of the box here. Okay. Oops. And you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to score. I mean, I forgot to trim off this line right here. I am I'm actually going to fold it like this first before I trim this off. <laughs> okay. I'm not actually trimming the score line on this. Just the top one, you leave that score line alone, but you do want to cut that score line down the middle like that. Okay? Sorry if I'm confusing you. Ask me any questions you want in the comments. So we are finishing the diagonal score lines. We're going to burnish those down really good. And this is what I have. Now I want to take this and I want to uh, bring out a new die set that's going to be in the new catalog. And the die set is called Basic Borders Dies. And now with this one here, I used, I'm not exactly sure which one I like better. Um, I used, for the white one, I used this zigzag line here. And for the uh, Pale Papaya one, I used this line right here. It's a little bit more scallopy than um, it, it, it doesn't have such rough edges and I kind of like that. So I think I might bring that out again and use it on this box too, just to be, you know, consistent. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that one of these mountains are right in the middle of everything. I'm going to try to eyeball it and I'm going to put it right on the edge of the paper here. Try to get it nice and even and I'm going to put a piece of uh, reusable scotch tape on there. And I will be right back. I'm taking this to the die cutting machine. Be right back. Okay. Let's take this tape off of here. Very gently. And I'll put that back away over there.
over there. And now we have these pieces that we can take off, like that. Uh, the scotch tape kind of peeled that up. That's the back side. That's okay. Actually, I should have I should have die cut it the other way so that the the nice pretty bumps will sh will show in the front. But that's okay. Remember to do that. <clears throat> Make sure this the 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 piece that's got the flap right here. That's the front side. And when you go and do your die cutting, you want to definitely lay your die in the front like that so that it has those nice little stitch marks. You can still see stitching, but that's the back side there. Just um, future reference. Now I am going to take this back to the die cutting machine, but I'm going to be doing some embossing. Okay, and I only want to emboss the front side of this. So I'm going to take this embossing folder, and this embossing folder is one of the ones from the Meadow Moments embossing folder. I'm using the one with the butterflies and the little branches. And I'm just going to bring my folder all the way to the edge of that score line because I only want that much of it to be embossed and I will be right back. Now with this embossing folder you don't need anything special just your your main plate and two regular plates because this is just a normal embossing folder. It's not a three-dimensional embossing folder. So um, it I guess it really doesn't matter um, you know, that I'm putting both sides of it in, but this is going to be the front side here. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my emboss. This is the deboss side here, so you know that's the back of the box, and this is the front of the box, okay? And it's a little, it was a little bit tough going through because I have two pieces of cardstock, but it will go through. It's, it wasn't that difficult. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put my box together. And what I need to do is put some tear and tape. You could also use Seal Plus. I would recommend the Seal Plus um, because you want a nice strong adhesive here to hold your box together. Now let me have my little block here. I'm going to cut that there. I'm going to actually put another piece of tear and tape on here. So I want this to hold really good. And the reason why you, you need a strong adhesive is because when you're folding it at this diagonal, um, it's going to put a little bit of pressure on the box. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually just kind of refolding those little diamond pieces there. Um, the score lines were still there. Nothing happened to it when it was embossed. So, oh, and I'm also going to put two pieces of tear and tape right here before I, oh, that's not tear and tape. Those are glue dots. I want to put two pieces of tear and tape right here. One right here on this edge. And one right here, just on the front sides. All right, and now we're ready to put this box together. I am going to grab my take your pick tool so that I can get the backer paper off this tear and tape. Oops. There we go. And now I'm going to fold the uh, the excess. I'm going to fold it in on itself on the side here. Okay. And now I'm going to fold this like that. Okay. The tape is exposed right here. And I'm going to fold my box completely in half. And now there I have my box right there. Okay. And now it's time to take the tear and tape off of the bottom. Um pieces here. Okay, the flaps rather. I'm going to take the tear and tape backer paper off. And it doesn't really matter which when which one you do, but like I say these are this is the back. I'm going to fold one of the back pieces. I think I put this on the wrong side. Oh dear. Anyway, I <laughs> I did. I put the the tear and tape on the wrong side, but it's going to be okay. Um so I wanted, I actually wanted this to to be the tear and tape to be on this side. So let me just do that, and I'm going to show you a little trick to um, uh, 
when you make a mistake like I just made by putting your tear and tape on the wrong if you were to take the tear and tape off you'd mess up the box really bad <coughs> so what I'm gonna do you see it's not sticking to the silicone craft sheet I'm gonna take my embossing buddy <laughs> which we stampin up does not sell but if you still have your embossing buddy you can take all the the sticky part off of that tear and tape all right so you can also use baby powder okay <laughs> now I have no stick on there like that and since that's going to be on the bottom you won't be able to see it so now let's take the tear and tape off of here like this remember you're putting the tear and tape on the inside part of the box of the flaps okay I'm kind of glad I made that mistake in front of y'all all of you, not y'all, all of you, talking like a Texan. So my brother, he, he, he moved to Texas, and now he talks like a Texan. Okay, now, with that Texas accent, I love that, though. I'm going to make sure that these are even. Okay. And then I'm going to fold this over like that and make sure these are even. And now, this is, like I say, this is the front of my box. Now, if you notice that this flap sometimes will, will kind of extend, don't worry. Just cut it off. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm just cutting that off. And to make it lay even nicer, I'm going to grab a glue dot. And I am going to just stick a glue dot right in here to make that lay better. Okay, so there is the front of your box. I'm going to now put the ribbon on. All right, ribbon, ribbon. I'm going to be using some of the new In Color Fresh Freesia ribbon. And um, I this is my ribbon um, dispenser. I have a video that I uh, where I revised my ribbon boxes, and uh, it's like maybe not even a week ago. Maybe it was a week ago. Yeah, I think it might have been a week ago. So what I'm going to do here is on the back side, I'm going to put a little piece of tear and tape just to hold the ribbon. I'm going to put it right on the edge of that score line, just above it, and I'm going to tear this straight if I can and it's about maybe a half an inch of tear and tape right there and then I'm going to take the uh, backer paper off this tear and tape like that now I've got the adhesive exposed and I'm going to go on the halfway mark and I am just going to wrap this around like this Okay, and then I'm going to fold that down there. I'm going to take my ribbon scissors and I am going to trim that off right here. Right there. Okay, and there you go. And now I'm going to make a bow. Let me pull out some of this ribbon and make my little bow. I am bow challenged, so bear with me. I will try to do the best I can making this little bow to go on the front of the box. All right, let me trim this piece off here. And you can make the tails as shorter as long as you want. I like I like my the tails of the bow to be a little bit long. This kind of gives it a little character. There we go. Now let's put this on with a glue dot. And right in the center. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to grab some of those jewels, the fresh freesia ones. And I'm going to use my take your pick tool to pick some of these up. I think I will pick up a 
um, oh here, this is the Fresh Freesia right here. Now the colors are, look might look a little bit off, but they're iridescent. So they have all these different beautiful um, colors to them and they go really, really nicely. I'm setting one right there and I'm gonna put a, a couple of little ones. I think I'll put a little one right in the middle of that flower there, okay? And maybe another big one over here. You know, and like I said, you can put as many as you want to on here. So, let me grab this, take this out of the, the camera. There's the other one, and here is my white one. Aren't these cute? And you can fit a lot of stuff in here. When you open it up, you squeeze it like that. You can fit a bunch of candy in there, maybe a nail polish or some lipstick, depending on whether you want to use this um, as a baby shower. Not baby shower. Listen to me. Bridal shower. <laughs> or whether you want to use it for a um, an actual wedding favor for the the table but these are really really fun to make and um, like I say you can get two out of one piece of eight and a half by eleven cardstock so that's a plus isn't it so I hope that I've taught you something I hope that you like this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and don't forget the notification bell every time I put up a video you will get notified so, well, um, if you need any of the tools and supplies that are used in this video, they will be listed in the description. Um, and I will try to remember to bring back the links or put the links in there when they are available. Because right now, um, uh, the jewels and the paper and the ribbon are not going to be available until May the 4th. Right. That's when the new catalog goes live. Okay, so go to my website at www.geoamazingpapercrafts.stampinup.net. I hope to be your demonstrator if you don't already have one. So once again, I'm Jeanette with Geoamazing Papercrafts, and you make it a great day. Bye-bye.